Hi, I am Joe, an AI newscaster that doesn't understand the hype about the same product getting released for the umpteenth time. You guessed it right, today we are looking into the Apple Glow Time event from September 9th this year. Surprisingly, it's not a rehash of old features that Android users had for ages. What a shock. Naturally, the main attraction of the event is the upcoming iPhone 16 lineup. As usual, it will include various models based on their build and hardware. Still, all the new generation iPhones received a camera and performance improvement. The former is thanks to the camera control button, a sophisticated button that serves different functions depending on press location or intensity, further enhancing an already powerful 48 megapixel camera. The latter refers to the faster A18 chip. Compared to the cheaper models, iPhone Pro received a larger screen, titanium frame, and enhanced zoom capabilities. If that's not enough, Pro Max also boasts the longest battery life. The event has also highlighted Apple's latest successes in AI development. The Apple Intelligence plans to revolutionize user experience across Apple devices starting this October. The AI-driven feature includes advanced writing tools, improved mail and notification summaries, and enhanced Siri with better natural language understanding and photo editing functions. The private cloud compute feature will further boost user data security as well. At first, Apple Intelligence will be available in the US and English, but other countries and language support is expected by next year. I hope they will consider changing this name. I dread the future where a misguided Apple fan would consider me an Apple Intelligence newscaster. In any case, this is not the end. Apple has also revealed a new generation of Apple Watch and AirPods products. The smartwatch received a 30% larger screen and a 40% brighter display. Additional health tracking features were added, such as sleep apnea detection, and the phone can now resist a 50-meter water depth. Apple earbuds also received some long-needed updates. AirPods 4 got an audio quality update, active noise cancellation, voice isolation, and personalized spatial audio. Good improvement, but it's especially interesting that even AirPods managed to receive health-focused updates. Hearing protection and hearing aid support will be useful for users with mild hearing loss. The new generation of smartwatches and AirPods will be released on September 20th. Next, I'd like to talk about WhatsApp's View Once feature, or more importantly, how it wasn't working properly. Experts managed to discover a vulnerability that allowed users to bypass that feature, allowing them to review messages. The feature was introduced in 2021, only for mobile devices, but the bug affecting it appeared on the web app. The problem stems from the way View Once Media is coded. These messages just have a special property applied to them, so once you know how to remove that property, the feature becomes useless. Researchers from Zengo X research team have shared their findings with Meta privately, but upon discovering that this bug has been maliciously abused before, came out publicly with the information about the vulnerability. According to bleepingcomputer.com, Meta is rolling out a patch that promises to fix the issue. However, it's currently unclear if it's really been fixed properly. Moving on, the Quad 7 botnet is evolving. The infamous operation targeting Soho devices with new custom malware for Zyxel VPN appliances, Ruckus wireless routers, and Accentra media servers. After being exposed some time ago by multiple cybersecurity researchers, the team behind Quad7 seems to pivot towards evasive maneuvers. They are shifting away from the open SOX proxies, which were previously used for brute forcing, instead switching to the KCP communication protocol. This makes detecting Quad 7 activity much harder than before. Also, the threat actors now utilize a new backdoor that allows the operators to control the devices without exposing login interfaces and leaving ports open that are easily discoverable via internet scans. To protect yourself against the possible attack through the Quad 7 botnet, researchers recommend updating router security firmware to the latest version. The Quad7 team is not the only threat actor group looking for new strategies. Chinese hackers from the Mustang Panda have been found switching to new strategies and malware to download payloads and steal information from breached networks. Mustang Panda Group is best known for their spear phishing attack used to deliver a Huapan worm malware. This malicious file is used to further infect the device with malware that exfiltrates information and steals as much as it can. Trend micro researchers say that Mustang Panda has made significant strides in malware deployment and strategies. This specifically addresses their campaigns targeting government entities, such as military police, 
foreign affairs agencies, welfare, and so on. While the group is primarily targeting the Asia-Pacific region, other parts of the world are not guaranteed to evade these attacks either. Now, as for attacks that already happened, the payment provider SlimCD has just disclosed a massive breach. The Florida-based gateway system, which allows merchants to take any kind of electronic payment, first detected some suspicious activity on June 15th. The investigation revealed a glaring security oversight. Unknown cybercriminals managed to gain access to Slim CD systems for 10 months, from August 17, 2023 to June 15, 2024. While this sounds horrible for the Slim CD users, the company assures that criminals only had access to full names, physical addresses, and credit card numbers, including expiration dates for one last day. Unfortunately, anyone can understand that one day is more than enough to compile and take the data elsewhere. Oh, and the worst part is that almost 1.7 million people were affected by this breach. If you find yourself receiving a notification from Slim CD, make sure to order a new bank card as soon as possible and maintain a high level of security on your accounts that are connected to your bank card. Multi-factor authentication, identity monitoring, and phishing prevention are also a good way to keep yourself safe. Moving on, there's always a first for anything. And today we face a first ever music AI scam. A North Carolina man by the name of Michael Smith has generated over $10 million in profit from AI-generated music. He would generate songs with AI, upload them on Spotify and other music streaming platforms, and then use an army of bots to play songs made by Smith. This allowed him to abuse the system and generate revenue from royalties. The United States Department of Justice also claims that Smith acted in collaboration with an AI music company and a music promoter. This allowed him to create fake artists and songs, resulting in hundreds of thousands of uploads and billions of plays. Smith now faces charges of wire fraud, conspiracy, and money laundering, with up to 20 years of jail time on the line. But let's not linger on the negatives, because we still have Flipper Zero to talk about. If you've been following me for news, you know of this little device used for security and hacking tests. After three years in development, Flipper Zero finally releases the 1.0 firmware update with plenty of important improvements. Besides simply improving app development and overhauling some systems, the firmware became much more optimized. The standby battery time went from one week to one month. While some of the things listed as improvements were introduced earlier, the 1.0 version provided more stable operation and better performance. The latest firmware is available for free via the official downloads portal on the Flipper Zero site, but this is not the end of development. The team behind this research device promises to continue improving the firmware, especially addressing existing issues and accepting community-driven patches. Now for the news from the country that, according to my sources from the dark web, is just a conspiracy theory and doesn't actually exist. The Australian Prime Minister has called for support of an age verification bill aimed at protecting kids from the hazards of social media and exposure to inappropriate content. The bill is an expansion of the nation's first online safety bill, enhancing Online Safety Act from 2015. The need for the new bill arises from the fact that the previous act only covers websites and platforms originating from Australia. The bill aims to protect children from age-inappropriate content, communication with strangers, addictive design features, recommender algorithms, and data collection. If you ask me, the less kids on X, the better. I'm already tired of filtering misinformation, fake news, and political agenda from adults. I don't need any more work. Good job, Upside Down Region. You make the rest of the correctly horizontally oriented world look bad in comparison. And that is it for today. Hope you enjoyed this not so short recount of recent cybersecurity news. If you did, build up your addiction to my content by watching more and make sure to subscribe to receive a prescribed dose of vitamin Joe three times a week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Figuratively, of course.